This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. We are joined now by Dr. Kent Osborne, Professor of Medicine, Director of the Dan L. Duncan Cancer Center, and the Lester and Sue Smith Breast Cancer Center at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. Hello, Dr. Osborne. Good afternoon. I believe you are the, is it the co-director? Yes, there are three of us now. Um, Myself, Peter Abden, and Carlos Artiaga are the three co-directors for the meeting. And while I called it the annual San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, and actually this is the 35th year, Correct. what are some of the challenges that you are all facing in regards to a pro sufficient tissue, the sharing of tissue, the understanding for, for patients to, to recognize how valuable their tissue is and the opportunity to share their tissue? There are many, many problems in doing this. Um, we've been involved in tumor banking for 35 years, going back to Dr. McGuire's original banking effort that I wrote the computer program for on punch cards back in those days. It was back in the late 70s. It's generally not the patient. If the patient is asked, 95% of the time, they want to give their tumor for research because that's how we'll discover new things. That if it doesn't impact them, it may impact their daughters or their sisters or their mothers. Um, it's largely a combination of uh, other factors. The physician, who may not have time to ask them. The pathologist, who's busy analyzing the tumor and may not have the time to do what needs to be done to the tumor to put it in, rapidly freeze it, and so forth and so on. Um, and, and then there's legal issues. Uh, gee, can I give that tumor up to somebody else? What if they discover something on my tumor? So there's many sort of regulatory issues. HIPAA didn't help at all, as an example of that. Um, when we moved from San Antonio to Baylor, we took all of our tumors with them, with us, for research. And there were, um, oh, 50,000 of those tumors from patients in whom we were getting follow-up every six months. We had a traveling team of people that would go to the various hospitals around the country and get clinical follow-up information. Well, when HIPAA came out in 1999, in order to continue to do that, we would have had to reconsent all of those patients. Impossible task, so we stopped. Nothing we could do. We stopped getting follow-up. Um, so that really damaged our efforts considerably. So little things like this add up and has made tumor banking very hard. Another issue is money. It's expensive. And although tumor banks were mandated many years ago for cancer centers to have, and they would give us a little bit of money to have a tumor bank, and the same thing with these spore grants that I mentioned, they were required to have a tumor bank. But the amount of money that one could allocate to doing that was simply not enough. It's not just getting a tumor and putting it in a freezer. It's getting the clinical follow-up afterward that lasts for many years that's the expensive part. And we just didn't have the money to do it. If we had, and if, we, if it had been done way back, if everybody had a tumor bank like Dr. McGuire did and thought in advance, we would have the problem of genomics solved by now. We would know all of that. Um, and even now, there are not sufficient tumors from patients with long-term follow-up to make sense of the mutations that are being discovered in the tumor. Do you have a message for the advocate community of how we might be able to assist, help, do something to ease the burden that you have now? I think there's a couple of things. They could demand, if possible, that their physician and their surgeon operate in a place that has a tumor bank. Just demand it. And if they say, we don't have such, then go to a place that does. That'd be number one. That would change it very quickly. That's what changed surgery for breast cancer, is the demand of patients wanting a lumpectomy after the data came out. So demanding that, and then uh, I think also um, trying to convince uh, Congress and whoever else it is involved with these things to maybe be a little bit more flexible on the informed consent issue. Um, and uh, we have adequate protections in place, I think, as we are now, and that would help a lot as well. Dr. Kent Osborne, co-chair of 
this annual San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, Professor of Medicine, Director of the Dan L. Duncan Cancer Center, the Lester and Sue Smith Breast Center at the Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. Thank you, you too.